Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tony. I'm co-founder and chief beer of Grow Bioplastics. Um, we are replacing oil-based plastics in ag and beyond with a biodegradable material that's actually made from biofuel and paper mill waste. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Albert. He is a vegetable and produce farmer in the East Tennessee community where I live now, and he's been farming for over 30 years. Albert uses a product called plastic mulch film to cover his crops to retain moisture, block weeds, and improve his yields. But at the end of the every year, he has a huge problem. He has to spend $100 or more an acre to rip up over eight tons of his plastic from his field and send it to the dump. A recent report called the ag industry the biggest source of plastic trash that you've never heard of. If you took all of the plastic films in the US used every year and laid them end to end, they would wrap around the earth over 100 times. And with all of the films, totes, tubes, bags, meshes, everything that we use in ag right now, we are choking the planet trying to grow more food. So at Grow Bioplastics, we're actually using lignin, which is the primary waste product of the biofuel and paper making process to make a biodegradable plastic material. The paper industry right now produces over 50 million tons of lignin a year, and over 98% of that is burned or landfill. We have a process that's been patented at Oak Ridge National Lab, where we can take lignin powder, which looks a lot like cinnamon, and process it into a biopolymer alloy that is biodegradable, and then take that and turn it into lots of things like films. Albert can install our films, harvest his crops at the end of the year, but instead of ripping them up, simply plow his materials into the ground where they'll break down naturally at a rate that we can actually tune. We're entering the market in these three areas because over 90% of these farmers are standard using bio, uh, mulch films. And this is a $43 million small slice of a growing $6.5 million global market. We have strategic partners from biopolymer co-producers, lignin sources, science and field testing study people, um, at Oak Ridge and UT, and also customers like Driscoll's in California. We do have competition with other green materials, but the majority of them are made from food-based materials like potato and cornstarch, which competes for arable land for the food we need to grow for the future, and a lot of them are not actually biodegradable, but compostable, which is a different set of conditions that doesn't occur on the field. My co-founder Jeff and I have six years working in sustainability-related projects together and a great founding team with over 40 years in science, business, and over six different startups. We won a bunch of awards and got a lot of recognition for what, doing what we love, and in the process, people like Albert have won some awards too. So the future for us is to tackle not only mulch films, but all of these other uh, industries and verticals in ag. And again, I'd like to tell you that I'm Tony Boba from Grow Bioplastics, and I'd like you to help me make the future of nature work for you and help people like Albert close the loop on plastic waste and agriculture. Thank you. I love how you're kind of going where the fish are already swimming with your, your criminal left strategy, but tell me a little bit more about how you're going to transition people away from plastics and something they're already familiar with to your material. How does it perform on a like-for-like -like basis and from a cost standpoint? So um, I, I guess I skipped over that on the pitch. So because lignin is a really, really cheap feedstock that's available as a waste product off the back end of these paper mills, uh, we can get it for as low as 15 to 20 cents a pound, which means in our materials, we can actually be cost competitive with oil-based plastics. So we can sell the material at the same cost to the farmer, where they can actually reap that $100 to $200 in savings by mitigating their disposal costs. Um, as far as material properties, we have the technology to make it the exact same material properties that exist now, um, and then eventually the same as you know our other verticals in the future, we have containers and foams and bags and whatnot. That's great. Yeah, Monica. Um, <coughs> I like the idea of what you're doing. Thank I have you. a question, when, when you plow that much lignin into the soil over time, do you know what happens at, at higher concentrations? Sure, so uh, much like uh, if you ever heard of biochar, the primary component in biochar is this kind of carbonized lignin material. So what they're doing is actually an accelerated version of what will happen with the lignin in our materials. It'll break down and actually add carbon content to the soil, which improves moisture and nutrient retention. How are you going to scale your operation to meet the needs of uh, increased food production? So in the beginning, we're planning on working with toll manufacturers. There's a ton of open capacity in the polymer industry, and compounders actively looking in the biopolymer space. 
we're talking with a lot of them right now. Um, the model that we're going to move to once we demonstrate that this is scalable in the larger markets is to move to a completely upstream producer where we will have the manufacturing capability to co-locate near the existing paper mills or there are some new biorefiner operations coming online that are actually doing pre-separation of lignin and cellulose in those materials. So that co-location strategy will allow us to deploy smaller uh, footprint equipment across the country and eventually across the globe. Harry, did you have a question? I did, yeah. So as more paper that is produced from recycled paper, what does that mean for lignin production? Uh, and if it's such a great material, will there be increased competition for it for other uses over time? Great question, thank you. So uh, the paper industry, their lignin production will likely decrease, but a lot of them are actually looking to shift to themselves become a biorefinery and working on separation technologies. There are companies like Redmatics or Inventia who are actually working to make these upfront separations possible and using, instead of cellulose for paper, cellulose and lignin as platforms for other fine chemicals. So right now, that in combination with the push for cellulosic ethanol is expected to triple the amount of lignin available in the next 10 years. Is that, right. I don't know if I got a chance to answer all of that. Let's give it up for Tony. Yeah.